Um, uh, yeah, let's talk about Death Stranding. Um, that's Yay. what we're going to lead with. I need to go on like a mini rant here. So as a result, everyone here gets a free podcast card where you get to talk about whatever dumb shit unimpeded. In oh, the shit. Future. Man, I can't wait. I can't wait for Bradley to talk to us about fucking uh, Space Station 13. I'll do Ladybug Part 2. No! Uh, <laughs> we should have a Space Station 13 week. But, week? Uh, there's a, yeah, maybe. But I am really excited for Death Stranding because this is, was like one of the most hyped games for Willer. Like, yeah, ever. I guess for like all like a bunch of like nerds who are really in gaming and gaming culture the kojima boys were very excited i started playing last night i play more today i'm really enjoying it well what are your thoughts and opinions yeah. well hold on i have a whole thing thoughts and oh, opinions. oh he, he has I, this planned out well i was going to plan it out but i read one piece to catch up to bradley oh, okay. <laughs> um i'm excited for one piece talk later but hell yeah that's stranding right so let's take it back uh-huh hideo kojima now, y'all one hop this time. Uh, Hideo Kojima, right? Correct. This man is a madman. He is known for making some of the most influential games, the Metal Gear Solid series. Um, he made a game called Police Knots, which is also really cool. The fuck? It's it's like about... It, it's not about Death Stranding. Well, you can look it up later. But Kojima left uh, Konami. Uh, M- MGS5, kind of a disappointment for me personally. It didn't have as much Kojima bullshit as I would like, and by also that I mean didn't have his name on the cover, huh? It also didn't have his name on the cover, but it had his name all over the game, which feels yeah. intentional. Then, mm-hmm. um, it did it? I'm pretty sure it has his name on the cover. Anyways, it does not have his name on the cover. Weird. Um, so we've been waiting on Death Stranding for three and a half years, and this whole time we've been like, "What the hell even is this game?" Because <laughs> Every trailer was super cryptic, Um, the story seemed insane, it seemed like Kojima had a lot of money, and he was unhinged, and he was just going for it. Uh, That's exactly what this game ended up being. (laughs) (laughs) But it's great. Um, So, Kojima is known for making very innovative kind of uh, gameplay genres, uh, and being very artsy with his stories and his themes. That being said, he's got that, I'm going to call it the Japanese writer syndrome, where it's like, <laughs> hold on, hear me out. Okay, I'm, I'm, no, I'm ready. I'm, I'm excited. <laughs> it's like Japanese writers are very unsubtle sometimes, and then also sometimes in super serious stories, they're just fucking clown shoes goofy, right? Yeah, so yes. let's look at another one of my favorite writers. Let's look at... Uh, Hirohiko Araki of JoJo's fame. Of course. There's so much dumb bullshit in JoJo's. <laughs> I made a joke to Willer. Today. <laughs> uh, we'll save that for a little bit. <laughs> That's probably the best joke you've ever made. Um, but so it's like, let, let, like there's so much weird dialogue and unsubtle stuff, but at the end of the day, they're writing such unique stories. Yeah. It also might be just a whole Japanese culture. It probably is a Japanese culture thing that we just don't. Well, that's why I say it's like a Japanese yeah. writing thing. Because then you also yeah. look at like Oda, right? We were yeah. just discussing a couple weeks ago how one, how close to the climax of Alabasta, you have Luffy inflate himself with water, and it's a super serious like. No, this is actually happening. He's actually a water balloon right now, fighting crocodile. Ew. <laughs> Japanese people different. Bradley, how could you say this? <laughs> Reverse all, harem jutsu. All this to say is, uh, being subtle is a weakness, and Kojima is the strongest man I know, <laughs> because he can he he can be so on the nose with his writing, but it's just also so layered at the same time. So let me give you some examples. Right, say you're writing a character who doesn't die. And it's and he can revive, right? What would you call this character? Oh, um, uh, uh, main character Coon. No, you would call him Die Hard Man because oh, he doesn't die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Say you have a character. No, no, no. But it's, but hold on, hold on. You have to remember, you don't pronounce it as like a hard man. <laughs> you pronounce it as Hardman. Hardman, yeah. <laughs> that's that's correct. He's like, Sam, it's Die Hardman. <laughs> it's completely it, serious. Say it you have a like name. But <laughs> say you have a character who used to be a coroner and is well versed with studying the dead, you would would you call him dead man only if you were a brave person? <laughs> say you have say you have Jesus Christ. Say you have a character <laughs> whose main goal in the story is to link up <laughs> the entire United States as he's forming bridges and connecting communities. And he's you, delivering things. You would call him Sam Porter Bridges, and this is the hey. man that we're dealing with right now. There's and a character. <laughs> it Sam's a reference to America for Uncle Sam. That's true. It, see the layers start already. There's a character called Samantha America Strand. Yeah. <laughs> but all this to say that even with all this goofy stuff, like Kojima is just such an interesting writer. Either way, where. So the theme of the game, right? He he made Death Stranding with the idea of the theme of strands. And he will take that in every direction possible. So the game is called Death Stranding. There's a whole speech about how strand is a funny word because strands means pieces of ropes. But if you wash up on the beach, you're stranded. And it's, he just goes on tangents like that. He really likes wordplay. But at the end of the day, he is trying to say something. And, like, everything in Death Stranding builds up to this theme about connecting strands or connecting people is what it really gets down to. And I feel like every single gameplay decision and story decision was made around this theme. And it's ridiculous and insane, but really, when you step back, there's so many layers to it that you just have to appreciate it. There's really nothing like it. It's safe to say that, like, Kojima just got really high and got stuck on, like, oh, strand is such a weird word, man. It's, it's And then just of went like off that. on a tangent. Yeah. yeah. But it, at okay. the same time, like, it's cohesive in what he's trying to say. It it's really not, is. Like, it's it's, it's not like Kingdom Hearts level of bullshit where you're just like, I don't know what's happening anymore. Or even the point where um, you're interviewing the creator and you ask him a question and the answer he gives makes you more confused afterwards. Terra Nord, like, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's it, speaking of like crazy Japanese writers, right? You got that end of the spectrum. But the thing about Kojima's stories that make him land is how cohesive and grounded everything is. Mm -hmm. As ridiculous as everything in Death Stranding is, there's an interview dialogue or some sort of dialogue in the game that explains every supernatural occurrence in this post apocalyptic world, right? So, for example, you have a phenomenon called the time fall which is rain in the death stranding world causes things to age rapidly and this is both in cutscenes and in gameplay it has multiple ways that it's incorporated and there is explanations to why time fall exists and when time fall hits land it becomes just normal water so that's why not all water is fucked and it just goes on and on all technology is based off of chiral particles which are these crazy particles that let you build technology that interfaces with the past so you can send data to each other instantly because it's processing data in the past it's fucking wild but mm -hmm. it's cool how there's an explanation for it all and kojima isn't just winging it like i feel like say kingdom hearts does yeah talk to me about some gameplay loops man yeah no. let's talk let's talk about loops but you well, know you could form loops with strands of rope <laughs> and oh god and that's important to know uh so this game has been described by many detractors of it as it just looks like a walking simulator i i think that's at, like that's calling a first person shooter a point and click game you know like it, it's really taking away all the nuance from what could be considered a walking simulator i guess and it's, like I, I and the thing about walking simulators they're quite peaceful. I feel no peace with this game. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, because ahead. yeah, I've I've been play I haven't played as much as Willer, but I, I played it a good amount last night and today. And it's just there was a moment where so like the whole gameplay loop is you go to a station and you're basically told here's a box. 
I need you to deliver this box to this location. And your big kind of like opponent throughout the entirety of this journey is essentially nature's like nature itself. As you have to traverse the terrain, you have to make sure your box doesn't fall over and like break and all this other stuff. And that's not even like coming in with the fucking ghost bullshit that happens but yeah. like the bit like just putting everything else aside like i think the first like 20 30 minutes of this game really sh showcase of like this is what you're doing like you literally find boxes you put them on your back and you walk to your next destination and you have to find the best route that is both quick and with the least amount of danger or harm to yourself and your cargo and and there's a lot to that right because mm -hmm. Depending how your boxes are stacked, your center of gravity changes, which causes Sam to lean one way or the other, and you have to control him with the shoulder buttons to kind of balance him out. So the simple they managed to make the simple act of walking yeah. over a slightly steep hill be a little bit dangerous because if you're not on your ball like if you're not on top of your game, you could just stumble and fall and damage all your cargo, which is the i guess like a health bar that you could consider for just maneuvering around the game if you mm -hmm. don't maneuver well there is a like abstract health bar that will get destroyed um, this, got, this sounds awesome it's if you explain that to, um, it's interesting you say that because i feel like it's really hard to explain that because explaining that to other people would make him go this sounds really boring and frustrating Listen. i like I can imagine him pitching being like hey like you're gonna play and you're gonna have to carry stuff and deliver it but while you walk over terrain, you got to, like, balance yourself. No, no, no. Here's, here's the pitch for the game. You walk into the conference room, and, and you pull up a big piece of notepad, and you plug in your Nintendo Switch, and you go, like, everyone likes the climbing part of this game. We'll just make that the thing and make it only that and focus only on that. That's the game. Like, it, it's it, – yeah. On the terrain part, like, let's yeah. – just the terrain itself, right? You have a scanner mm – -hmm. Uh, there's this little robot on your shoulder called the Odra deck, and you can use it to scan, like, terrain. And it'll ping terrain as blue, yellow, or red for each individual little terrain square. Like, it's not squared because it's a proper terrain. I don't know how like they... every footstep. They, they overlay every footstep and how dangerous that footstep will be so you know to avoid certain areas. And what's cool is, like, think about any open world game. Walking to your location is trivial. You're just doing it you're just like getting there and you're gonna fight some stuff on the way yeah but so they, but they make the traversal the actual gameplay to the point where crossing a small river is something you have to stop and consider just mm -hmm. every time so they've really taken uh uh what is that uh, uh, uh oregon trail and like amped it to 15. Yeah, yeah this is high budget um artsy oregon trail and so we're and we're also taught this game is also as i like to put it a fishing game I'm surprised it took Willard this long to figure out what I mean by a fishing <laughs> game. After after we've played Monster Hunter and everything for so long. No, oh, I, fishing and Monster Hunter is great. I yeah. get what you mean by a fishing... I mean, you should explain it to the audience. Let me just say, Basically, I get what you mean. It's just this was the first time where I was like, oh, yeah, I feel real big fishing right now. Yeah. Basically, the idea for me with like all games are fishing is that essentially when you have a game, it's broken down to like three major parts. The the middle one being your major action part, like that's like your basic. Like if you're going Call of Duty, it's your gameplay match. If it's in PUBG, it's fighting people on the ground. It's any of that kind of stuff. And then you have your afterwards, where you kind of think to yourself, okay, what happened? What did I do wrong? And what can I do better next time? But before that, you also have your preparation stage, where you have to analyze what you're about to get into and really make a decision about how you're going to approach your action phase of your game. So like in Fortnite, for example. It'd be basically like choosing where you're going to land, where you're going to drop, like what are you looking for? Or in like Monster Hunter, the gear that you're putting on, the armor you're using, the decorations, just anything that you think will give you an edge during this action phase of the game. And Call of Duty, it's your loadouts. It's, it's just that basic kind of concept of like preparing for what you're going to do, doing it, and then seeing how you can improve next time in both the action and the preparation parts of the game. Which I guess is a also in fishing, whatever. Let's not, let's yeah, not think too hard. Kind of there's another long metaphor I can go into, but we're not going to go into it right now. But that's the basic idea. Um, this game is very much that where, say, you're so you're you're tasked with a mission. One of the missions, for example, is deliver this pizza. It's very like tongue in cheek. 
like deliver this pizza to this uh, bunker, and it's like okay, the pizza needs to be flat. It needs to be horizontal, or else it's gonna take damage every step of the way because you can't flip a pizza over. So it needs to go on your back horizontally. Okay, that's step one. How am I gonna orient it on my back? Thankfully, there's an auto arrange button for auto arranging your cargo, so you mm-hmm. don't have to worry about it a lot. Um, next step, where am I going through to deliver this pizza? You have this map, right? And just by doing that, you need to figure out, okay, I'm going to have to cross this area that has big chasms or this area with a lot of rivers. And actually, there's an enemy camp along the way. So keeping all of that in mind, you have to pick out your initial loadout, what you're going to bring in the beginning of your journey. Keeping in mind that every single tool that you're bringing is going to be physically on your main character's back and is going to influence the way you move. Mm-hmm. Secondly, oh shit, now I'm running into stuff while I'm going there, stuff that I want to pick up. I need to, if, if I don't have enough space before, can I open up space for this or do I need to just leave it? And if I pick this up, is it going to fuck up my balance? Just the moment-to-moment gameplay is a lot of decision-making that you really can't explain and you really can't watch because you're not the one controlling sam controlling sam is very unique Mm -hmm. and it's very like it's kind of like one it's it's a game that really excels at being a game in that like you like if someone were like if my father were to walk in and watch me play this game you're like what are you doing you're just walking across he doesn't understand like how much thought i would have to go into going down a simple hillside and at the same time being like okay I'm leaning to the left a lot. How do I do this? And like, where, like, do I have any ladders? Do I have any like, like rope or whatever? And, and there's just, and you, because you're very clumsy like a human being when you carry these things, you're not like a robot, like in other video games. You, you look like you, a goddamn leaning tower of pizza when you're walking. Yeah. Like it's crazy. Mm-hmm. I heard this game has the best, like, so this is a single player game, but yes. It has the best multiplayer aspect from Dark Souls in it, I heard. I want, yeah. yeah, I was trying to, is there anything I want to bring up before I go into this? Because this is where the game really comes together, right? So, I, the I, other thing, the other big part about the game and ties into Willer is also, like, in terms of, like, your moment-to-moment, you also think about your long-term standing for things. Because, mm-hmm. like, you have to, like, you eventually unlock the ability to build structures and buildings, and so, like, bridges, for example, you can make a bridge, you can use the cross the river. The problem being is that because of the time fall, which is the rain, it'll derode, it'll erode that bridge a lot faster than it would in, like, real life. So you have to, like, kind of make use of that structure or item for as long as you can, as well as putting ladders down where you think you can put them down. Uh, additionally but, to structures, you also get a lot of tools. And it's yeah. the pacing for when you get new tools is perfect. Every mm-hmm. couple of missions, you get a brand new tool. So you get stuff like ladders, which are multi-purpose. Either put them diagonally, like upwards, so you can get higher, or you can put them flat on a ground to make a small bridge, right? Yeah. And you get stuff like that. You get ropes, which let you climb up and down, but you have to Rope be on godly. top. Ropes are really good. But the thing with ropes is if they're not on your side, you can't get them, so you have to like yeah. walk around. There's Every little tool has these little intricacies of how you use it, right? Mm-hmm. But how it all comes together, That's it sounds like a lot of work. To upkeep all these structures by yourself because you need to put them down you have a limited bandwidth to how many structures you can even put down yeah. stuff like a full out bridge costs a lot more than say putting down a little post box which i'll explain post boxes after because they're also really cool but the way it all comes together is the fact that while you're playing the game other player structures and tools will also show up and this might sound trivial at first but the way that people come together to help one another in this game is downright inspiring. It is exactly what Kojima had in mind when he described the Strand game where it's a social game where you're all connecting um, in multiple ways, right? Every single form of the word connecting he tries to implement into the game. And in this, you're connecting with other people that you never even meet, but you're so thankful for having them there. Yeah. Yeah. Because, so, like, yeah. for as an example, right, say you're going through this really big trip. The longer you're out and you haven't rested, the more your stamina drains. Like, your your max stamina goes down over time unless you yeah, drink monster energy. <laughs> um, 
so if say you're coming back from a trip and it's really low and you have a lot of cargo but you just need to make it there's no better feeling than walking in and finding like a bridge that someone else laid down that trivializes what could have been a like catastrophic uh encounter with the environment or with yeah. actual enemies because as of like chapter two to three enemies are also a thing enemy camps are also a thing you always have to consider um mm -hmm. but so there's this area called the wind farm i don't know if you've gotten there joe yeah i just or like you have to go through the forest and then you end up at the wind farm yeah that forest is brutal for that early game right yeah the i way... hate that place. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying like I, I i didn't breathe i felt for like 10 minutes while going through it because it yeah. was just so tense a way that people have circumvented that forest is players went to the very right side of the forest and they built this system of ropes on the cliff side that oh, lets wow. you like swing from rope to rope, kind of like shimmy your way from rope to rope and completely avoid all enemy encounters. Mm -hmm. And that took a lot of people working together to set up that rope system. That's one way to do it. I took this left side where I snuck right through the enemies. But what I would do is I would place markers on all the save spots so that people could follow my tr follow my trail of markers and hopefully avoid all the enemies. And I would put, well, I'd I put one up, at the end where it's like just sprint yeah. through. What I ended up doing was I ended up doing like a lot of like placing a lot of ropes down and kicking them down like those sheer cliffs. Mm -hmm. So you could like basically like just repel down a lot quicker yeah. when you're moving through that area. Yeah, safely repel down. And yeah. then so – this seems like it would be busted, right? Because you get to an area and, like, there's already stuff there to help you. They're so genius. Like, you can tell a lot of time went to designing this game, right? Because mm -hmm. one of the systems of the game, like, a, a core story of the game is that you're moving westward from the east coast to the west coast. And to do this, to connect them all to the main center in the east coast, you need to link up... Um, these stations to the chiral network so that everyone can share communication with each other so what happens is every time you get to a new area you can't actually see any players uh structures or tools until mm -hmm. you link that area up with the chiral network so your first time going through an area you'll be pretty much by yourself so you, you might like find like one or two like random ladders yeah. or something but you're not going to be able to like for Definitely example no structures yeah, uh, but, like, I walked through, and, like, right before that wind farm area, and, like, another thing you can put down is signs, so you can, like, say, like, oh, this is here, or this is here, so, like, when I was going through the, so when I powered up the area first, at first, and I, like, it lit up, I could see all the little sign segments, I'm like, oh, there are ghosts there, I don't like that, I need the, it helps you prepare in the long run, and, like, really goes back to that first part of the fishing, it was like, oh, okay, this is where all these things are, I need, like, bring these items that could help me out like weapons I, don't, I haven't unlocked any kind of like weapon usage yet but it's it yeah the weapons are really i i like the pacing at which they give you that kind of stuff because so all that to say right when you link up the network you get access to other player structures so when i was leaving that really dangerous area i would have to run into the enemies again but as i was walking out there was two giant bridges that completely skipped every encounter that people made so that you can safely walk out of that area and bridges aren't cheap to make so it just makes you so thankful for the other players out in the world helping you out they are not fucking cheap to make jesus um another really cool design choice that the game makes is you get a bike really early in this game mm -hmm. and when you get that bike you can do a lot of side missions but you really only have like one or two primary missions left in that chapter and you have yeah. the bike to do them right so in my mind i was like this might be trivial with the bike. I'm kind of worried that this bike might trivialize um, some areas in the game because it is fun going on foot. It's lengthier, of course, but like a lot of fun, funny shit happens when you're on, on foot, and it's just a good way to maneuver. But they, they're really smart, and they thought that through because at the end of that mission where you get the bike, I don't know if Joe's there yet, you start Chapter 3, which is actually in another map. So oh, okay. You, you can't transfer your bike to that map, so you're back on foot. Midway through Chapter 3, you get the ability to uh, 3D print bikes <laughs> with the Cairo scanners. Yeah, It's like, okay, cool. If I have resources, I can always make a bike now. However, the terrain in Area 2 is a lot more dangerous. 
So mm-hmm. even though you have a bike and you might get a truck or something in that area, you might not always want to use it because the terrain's so di- so like dangerous in that area. There's huge cliffs that I completely crashed my bike in, and I almost big things yeah. almost happened because I was on a timer. Um, yeah, I, so they really think through everything. And there's the other aspect that I don't think you touched on, but if you walk too far away from an item or something, it disappears. Yeah. Like, if you don't use it, I mean, like, if you put down a ladder or, like, a rope, it's going to stay there for, like, a while. A, until a, like you... a piece of cargo or, like, a equipment if you leave behind. Yeah, equipment that you haven't, like, unboxed yet. And, like, I think the bike is the same way. Yeah. Well, no. I think the items on the bike, if you leave anything on the bike, can get stolen. Yeah. But... So what happens is if you leave your items behind, you get a message where it's, like, you're, you're too far away from your item, just so you know, that, that you left on the floor. If you keep going away from it, it disappears from your world and it pops up in other players' worlds now and it becomes lost cargo. This lost cargo system is fascinating because what happens is, say this was cargo that you had to deliver and it transports into another player's world, a player can pick up that cargo and they have a couple of different choices. They can ignore it, they can deliver it to a player-made post box, which are these hubs that you can make anywhere in the world that one you can partially deliver cargo from the world to that post box so that way another player can come in and finish the trip so Mm -hmm. say it's like kind of out of the way you can at least store it in a post box another player can show up pick it up and finish the trip for you Mm -hmm. or you can uh store stuff in that box and you can store stuff in a shared box where you straight up donate items to other players yeah Man, people sound really nice in this game. Uh, well, that's another theme of the game is the concept of likes. So your experience in this game is yeah. like people liking you with a little thumbs up. So you can like people's structures. And what's nice is you don't just like it once. You can't just like press like once and they get one like for their structure. You can mash that motherfucking like button just like all of you should mash <laughs> this like button if you're listening to this. But uh so- Yeah, like there's a bridge that was set up like that helped me like um it went over like that big double river at you know between the distribution center and that way station willer. You yes. know what I'm talking about? I th- yeah, I think so. There there's one that a player made set up so that like it crosses over like a bigger section in a more direct route towards back towards that way station. And so every time you go across, I just hit the like, the little like button on it, and just like every time, because it makes the trip so much easier than having to like get on the bike and like go across the rivers every time. Yeah, you see some structures with like thirty thousand likes, and you're like, this man is a hero to many. (laughs) Yeah, Uh, and what's nice is a ladder placement or something, or like a rope. I have a rope that has like four hundred likes, and I feel so good about it. (laughs) (laughs) It's 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 incredible because like sometimes I'm like. This rope is not going to get likes, but I'm going to put it down anyways just because I know it'll help someone. So I feel like Kojima has used this, like, there's even a term in the game called like sin, like a chemical in our brain when we get uh, social media yeah. feedback. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's actually a concept in the game. In fact, some of the enemies are called mules, where they're people mm-hmm. that are addicted to getting likes. So they fucking steal your packages so they can finish the package, like, delivery for themselves. They're fucking assholes. Um, yeah. but, uh, basically it just all comes together to like, even that he leveraged this like system to make me even go out of my way and just help people, even if it won't do much for me, but yeah. it also feels good when people like your shit. And what's funny is, so at first you can like mash the like button for five seconds. So however many likes you can give in those five seconds, you're worth to the player. As you level up certain stats, you get like up to eight seconds and you just mashing that like button for eight seconds it's it's silly but it's fun yeah um death stranding death stranding uh well one more thing worth bringing up is joe when you get to the i I told y'all this was gonna be a bit of a spiel when you get to the next area um there will be a, a thing called the auto paver this auto paver is a super large community effort to make highways oh So if people donate ceramic and metals and, like, resins and chiral crystals and shit, you can make sections of a highway. Interesting. Is this, like... This sounds like the Kojima part in Metal Gear Solid Five. 
Yes. Where he wanted everybody to, like, disassemble their nukes. This is exactly that, but he actually, like, that never happened in 5. Because yeah. people just didn't go through with it. But he designed the game to now, like, everyone is working together. I think he wanted to do that for Metal Gear Solid 5, but I think part of it was he got speculation but push to make it more actiony yeah whereas this really feels like he's he's like i want to make a game that like is focused on uh, bringing people helping. together being community and just overcoming a simple task and like he's done a great job with it i i feel and so like, like these hi- yeah these highways are very emblematic of it because the first time i saw a piece of the highway built i came back a little later and several pieces were built and I started contributing to them. By the end of like chapter three, I, me and other players had built this massive highway that connected all of map two basically. And you could get anywhere really fast. When you're on the highway, your vehicles don't lose batteries either. So you can just fucking go. And it just this, felt really good. This game, like I, I'm on Twitter right now. And like I, I follow, the reason why I'm on Twitter is because I follow Kojima and like the Kojima. Koji like, Pro. Yeah, like all of his accounts, they've been pretty much just like blasting Death Stranding content for the last three weeks straight, and, and like now that it's out, I I'm like just see like people play it, and like I jumped in your stream and I watched like five minutes of it, yeah, and apparently that was like a really big point in the game, Willer, yeah, <laughs> and, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but I was just like, oh wow, this this is awesome, and like. Now there's this other video where this guy is jumping across this chasm somehow, and I'm just after hearing you talk about how difficult it is to traverse terrain and watching him do this, I'm like, oh shit! Like even that has to have its drawbacks. Yeah, it's it's cool. I, I won't say too much, so Joe still has some surprises. But you get really cool ways to traverse terrain, but the terrain gets a lot harder. And every cool way you have to do it, you have to manage like battery or something or some sort of uh, ammo system. So it's very well thought out. Another so, it, it's worth bringing up that we were talking about how he wanted to make like a peaceful, helpful game, right? The punishment for killing someone in this game or dying in this game is maybe the best of any game I've ever seen. Tell me about it. If you kill, so in the lore, in the very first cutscene, you find out that if you if a corpse is not cremated, it draws BTs to the area. The corpse becomes a BT. This What's is a BT. A BT is like the ghost things. They're it's a short for beach things. Yeah. They they have a connection to the beach, which is like a afterlife area that I don't it's want. Kind of like, like what I've understood from like people talking. It's almost like an in between, like the part where like the world and the land of the dead are like touching, basically. Yeah. That's yes. The idea of it. All right. All right. And. So if you don't cremate a corpse, a BT shows up. If a BT eats a living human, it will cause a massive explosion that makes a giant crater. Joe, you saw one of the craters, right? It's like, what would you, yeah. like, college campus-sized? Maybe bigger? Maybe, like, small it's like, city? It's like Godzilla put his foot down. It, like, it's, yeah, hard. it's this massive crater. So if that happens if you die to a bt in the world or if you kill another human being when you get lethal weapons you if you don't do something about that corpse you will get a huge crater in your map and you cannot traverse that crater there's like a huge wind barrier if you try to approach it so like you just cut off a section of the map because you killed a human being and you did not like properly take care of the body so it's such a cool, like, it's part of the lore, it's a huge part of the story, so many aspects of the world building is formed around not letting people get near BTs because it's so catastrophic, and it's represented in the gameplay. So, it, like, there's so many different, like, ways that that's represented. Um, let's not get, even get into the theme that you, Sam Porters, are literally carrying everyone's hopes on your back. Literally... Yeah. You have their cargo that they need to survive, but also you are the only hope of America to reconnect, and it's all on your back. Or the fact that you have a allergy that makes you cry a lot, so you get to see Norman Reedus cry a lot. But notably, when it, someone close to you dies in the very early part of the game, we zoom into his face and he's not crying, and you're just like, this is a very interesting way to show that they had a very fractured relationship 
to where by that point of the game you've seen this guy cry like five times but he's not crying when someone really close to him dies it's uh, just all these little things um uh, it's all the little things really make the game the, the, even the little scanner on your shoulder has so much personality to where like after you he leave a beaten up. area yeah he gives you like a thumbs up or he like waves before he like retracts yeah <sighs> I will... the baby. oh the baby's so fucking cute bb bb is my boy and i will do yeah, anything that's beats baby bb stands for... huh yeah i guess it would yeah so you have this baby strapped to you and it's very much like you're carrying a literal womb in you and that you have to connect it to yourself in the umbilical cord and everything and you are um but they are babies it's a baby or all of them are babies they are basically taken from stillborn mothers but the mothers are are they're stillborns they're and the mothers still, they're are still mothers is what yes. they call them where the mother is like dead or like in it's brain the mother yeah. is brain dead but it's still like organically alive so they pop these babies out they're very mysterious yeah. even the characters in the world they're still trying to figure out how the fuck this works and mm -hmm. you put them in this little jelly tube and they can never escape that tube but as long as they're there they have a connection with the world of the dead still mm -hmm. very Cause... like i feel like this very, that's very catholic mythicism kind of thing um it, it's very much just like they're not f fully alive yet because yeah. they haven't been born but they're not Dead. So they're basically like a beach thing you can see yeah and they help you see the ghosts mm -hmm. um uh, yeah very cool um so in this game they don't teach the ghosts how to fight they teach the babies how to fight the ghosts well no. they, they teach the babies how to sense the ghosts yeah uh, why would the ghosts be fighting baby they don't really care they just want to eat a human i mean jojo's you know the ghosts fight babies that's, oh, that's true. true okay <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I see where you're going with that now. <laughs> yeah but the babies fight back with ghosts, so it's fair. Yeah, you fight the baby, the baby fights back. Bradley, do you have any death training related questions? I will talk about this again. I'm in chapter f four, almost in five now. I'm in chapter two. It's I'll just, say yeah. it. Uh, death training is very interesting because, like, uh, and Will, I think you said you had this kind of same experience where, even you, as someone who you know followed the game, getting all the information you possibly could for months. Uh, until like shortly bef before the game came out or even playing it um you you were like what is this game <laughs> yeah and, like, uh i was kind of the same way and i got to watch you play it a little bit and uh it's really interesting and man like e each time i've seen you play it you've been in a different spot than you were before and like seeing where this game's going like holy shit that, cha I, that chapter four stuff was pretty out there yeah <laughs> that was so, so good. yeah i mean you've been pretty comprehensive i don't know if i have any questions but um if, if someone some if someone listening somehow hasn't like heard of death stranding yet i don't know if it's possible but um like holy shit check it out i don't know if it's a bradley game but it, I, I think it definitely deserves props. It's it's very ambitious and I can, ambitious is a Kojima thing. I can let you try it out some point. I, yeah. I haven't even talked about how like genius the use of music in the game is. I guess I'll save that just for time. Uh, if you were to ask me though, is Death Stranding fun? Is this a fun game? For me, it is, but I can't say I would not recommend it because it's like, say you start playing a new sport for the first time, you're like, oh yeah, I guess. Uh, american football is pretty neat but like it's just people hitting each other it's just a walking simulator yeah and then you start actually like understanding what you're doing and it's all coming together and then it's like oh this is fun and this is for me it's kind of like that where like this game doesn't really fit into a genre very cleanly so as a result it's hard to uh gauge if someone will like it without them trying like it's it's just kind of one of those things uh, if yeah, you're on the like, fence maybe rent it first possibly yeah i uh i like i don't i kind of was i want because i saw the re I, I watched a review about it before willa got uh a copy of it and then i watched a uh a few like i watched like one trailer just to see like some gameplay and like from the view in the trailer i was like okay i'm gonna hold off until willer says something because he'll probably have a better idea of like how it actually operates and work and then i think it, it was yesterday right yeah yeah willer's like yo joe you should try this i'm like okay cool i i just need the willer approval to like 
dive into it because Willer plays basically every game I like to play long term, other than fighting games. Yeah. So. And those big uh, RPGs. Um, big yeah. Yeah, it, it was the kind of thing where it's like I wasn't sure if I was gonna like it because the reviews came out and they were pretty mixed. I don't. I, maybe reviewers didn't take to it well because they didn't get that community aspect, or they're not as used to Japanese writing like I am, where mm -hmm. I I enjoy all that dumb silliness. I think. I think a big part of it is that community aspect. Like, it's for sure, like, there's definitely this great sense of feeling when, or, like, relief when you, you're you walking along and you're just, and you see, like, a cliffside or, like, a small hill and you're just like, I, I can't go up that. And then you look over to a little bit to the left or the right and you see someone's put down a ladder or a rope or something. You're like, oh, my God. <laughs> praise Norman. <laughs> yeah, praise. Oh, man, all the actors are doing great, too. Um, yeah, it's I, fantastic. I, yeah. I, I mean... Let's be honest, you know, game critics, they, they give Call of Duty a great review every year. Yeah, that's true. Well, I, I mean, people are using walking simulator as an insult. I'm like, dude, some of the most prestigious games with the best stories that have come out have all been walking simulators. Like, like Journey? Like Journey, Miss, Soma, The Stanley Parable, Firewatch, Gone yeah. Home, Dear Esther, like... I I can see what? well this is a this is a bit of a debate worth getting into. I can see what they're going for because this is like reviews are coming out and they're like this is a sixty hour game. So when it's like, oh god, a sixty hour walking sim, you get scared. Uh people have beat this game. I saw someone earlier, it's like, Oh, I beat it in twenty five hours, I didn't do much side content. I feel like I've spent like thirty hours on the first three chapters. Well like yeah, that's how I had to stop myself today because I was playing and I was just like I'm just gonna keep doing the the side stuff because I think that's just interesting. Like it's addicting. Just, I don't know. It's it's like because part of it is that is that fishing loop of like what's the best way to like get from point A to point B as fast yeah. as I can, or with this different challenge, and put like put on me. Like I have one right now that I had to eventually pick up. That's like I have to get to the destination in 30 minutes. It's the furthest place away from me, and I can't be submerged in water, which gives me two options of either bringing enough ladders. Well, I guess the options are ladders. It's either I can try to like make bridges across the rivers and avoid the rivers at all possible, but it's like a long way around. Or I try climbing up the mountain cliff or the or the hills to the side of me, which is going to be a very shorter. Dangerous. Yeah, it's going to be very dangerous. And so it's I'm like I don't know what to do. Like I would want to scout out more, like figuring out like what there is up there. It, it was when I realized that loop was happening that I felt comfortable uh, recommending it to you. Yeah. Um, I think Tyler Tyler seems interested in it. Uh it's coming out on the PC, uh, but maybe, maybe. you'll be able to play it uh before then. I, maybe. I, I, if maybe. the stars we'll align. If the stars align. We'll be walking out in a few weeks and Willer and I will get back to you. <laughs> uh I think that's there's there's so so much more I wanna say. I'll save it for the second or third talk. Yeah, uh, we'll, I... save it in a month or... we'll we'll probably discuss some more in our end of year December podcast where we go yeah. through our top games of that year. Yeah, yeah, the, oh, like yeah. I I don't know if this is my top game yet. I it's definitely it's already it's top up three. For me. It's... Like especially as like a new experience game, it's just something yeah. brand new. It's like oh, this is great. <laughs> it, it's hard to say yet. I need to finish it, but it's definitely yeah. like I'm gonna go ahead and say it's already kind of masterpiece level, just as like. This is one of the best arguments for video games is art, where you mm -hmm. took this crazy artist, you gave him a huge budget, and he just made this game that people weren't even sure what the fuck it was oh. for days and that weeks. Me, Willer, what difficulty are you playing on? Hard. Um, okay, I same. recommend it. Yeah, it's... yeah. I, th I think if you're playing a lot of games, play on hard. Otherwise, just go easier. But, like, that's that's a given. But, like, I don't think hard is, like... Like, I even forgot that I was playing on hard until just now. And so you'd be like, would a, would a normal, like, person that picked it up be able to play this game? But then I realized there was a difficulty setting. Yeah. So I don't even know what, like, easy would look like for this game. I don't know. I, I think enemies would get taken down faster. You do fight bosses in this game. I fought, like, a hard boss last night. But I realized, like, I just need to take it slower. And I, I, I it was really fun. Uh, Joe... <laughs> How'd you like that thing where you got caught by the BTs for the first time? You mean the second time? Well, like, uh, well, whatever. the first time you get properly caught. Yeah, I was just like, ah, fuck. <laughs> it's, it's really cool. All and right. Now, it's like the floor is lava. I, I think I will, I will save you all uh, and spare you all for more Death Stranding talk. But yeah. 
Yeah. Norman Reedus and the Funky Fetus will return. 